Hello and welcome to Gradrigo. It can do many things. You can use it to write entire pieces of music. You can use it as a sound effects generator for video games or as a VST synthesizer for your chiptune production. But in this video, I'm going to focus on live coding capabilities of this engine. This box called N is going to play a single note and the box capital N lines up four boxes N one after another. A box can pass parameters to the boxes it spawns. And so I can define melodies like this. Now I'm tweaking the signal production. The slash SQR produces the output of a square wave of a given period. And I'm using this let statement to modify the period as I go. The period is in samples and my sampling frequency is 48,000 Hertz. There is an automatic conversion from the note names like this C4, C3, C G4, and etc. to those periods. So I don't have to calculate anything. Uh, now I'm producing a sequence of notes. And I will join them into a more complicated pattern. So I'm going to repeat this thing four times and I'm doing a little bit programming in, in front of that. I am going to use a global variable capital T, which is going to, which is going to be used as a transposition offset, uh, that number of semitones higher. Okay. Now I have the pattern and I want to repeat this thing in, in an infinite loop to play music. So I'm just going to do slash loop and the pattern and the moment the pattern is finished, I'm just going to go back, back where it started. And I mentioned that this is live coding platform, which means that as you modify the code and recompile the code, the changes are applied immediately to whatever you're producing. So now I'm making a second voice because any box of Gradrigo uh, can have multiple sequences and each sequence is written in, uh, in those curly brackets. Now I have two voices playing at the same time. And now I'm trying to do a bass drum. And bass drum is uh, just some square wave with varying frequency or period. The period is going to get bigger over time, which will make the pitch fall. And I'm going to call it BD. And um, this is uh, a similar thing. It's just a silence, which is, which is the same duration as the, as the bass drum. And why I'm doing this thing? So that I can time things properly because Gradrigo is, uh, doesn't have any internal timer. It just produces samples in a, in a sequence. And now we have three voices. Two, mel two melodies and one bass drum. And I can make it sound louder, just the bass drum, nothing else, you know, this slash fall. And I made the notes sound a bit sh shorter. And now I'm tweaking the, the snappiness of the bass drum again by, by altering the length of the fade out. And um, we also need some hi-hat. And hi-hat is just, a f could be done as a faded out, faded out um, noise, which is the question mark. The question mark generates random samples. And when I have a sequence of them, they just produce white noise. And I'm going to make an open hat exactly the same way. It's just a slightly longer hi-hat. Well, it's uh, the duration is the same, but the fade out is slower. And there we go. We have a, a nice electronic hi-hat, open hat pattern. And let's do a snare drum as well. A snare drum, it's kind of like bass drum, but slightly slower decline of the frequencies and also it only should sound on the every other beat. Here we go. Let's do one at the, the last 16th note of every two bars and it's too high. Yeah. 
Okay, this sounds like a nice chip tune, snare drum. And I can comment things out and just recompile. And I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get the, the output right away, like uh, you know the, the output changes right away. Let's do more music by expanding on our pattern. I didn't like the the ending of the pattern. I'll fix it later. Okay, let's do let's do melody. So for melody, I want slightly longer notes. So I'm going to make a box called M, and N was supposed to produce uh, a note which was one quarter of a quarter note, which is one sixteenth note. I'm gonna make M to produce a note which is uh, only a half of a quarter note, which is an eighth note. So I'm just going to change the slash duration to 0.5. And I'm going to write some melody here. Oh yeah, and, uh, and I'm actually instantiating the melody as, a, as, a, as, a, as a, another voice to the box called Pattern, so that they can play. So that whatever is like done by the texture is independent to what the melody is doing because melody is, is timed by eighth notes, not by sixteenth notes. So I just want that to be um, independent. And also, melody is going to be longer. It's not going to have this uh, two bar, two two beat pattern. It's going to be longer than that. But by putting it to pattern ensures that the beginning of the texture and beginning of the melody will always be timed by, you know, will be always synchronous with the st start of the texture. And the reason for that is that when you have two, two voices, um, the second voice is always cut off by the first voice. And uh, if the second voice is shorter than the first voice, it's padded with, with, with silence. something to the syntax because it's like super super verbose and this is still work in progress I will I'm gonna be tweaking the, the syntax so that it's like easier for applications like this nice Actually, the fade out works as a very simple envelope here, and I'm just making it longer and shorter, and that's that's how I modify the length of the, of the note. Subboxes. Subboxes is um, are essentially uh, subsequences, which are not parallel. They they will be sequential, so one goes after another because they are already inside another another sequence, another another voice. And I wanted to do that so that I could subdivide the note into two sixteenth notes. And uh, now I'm going to do something really crazy. I'm just going to subdivide them even further to. 30 second note. Oh yeah, the, the fade out was too too slow, so it didn't manage to finish on time. And now I will modify the the period of the square wave so that the pitch alternates with 
every other note. So we have a bit of an arpeggio here. thing have an envelope on its own. Yeah, so I'm just going to do a fade out, which is 0.5 seconds, uh, a half of the quarter note, which is a one eighth note long, which means that the This is where the practice comes handy because I'm not really a practiced life coder at this point yet, so I'm improvising, but you could clearly see that I could be faster and more efficient with what I'm doing right now. That is just a demonstration of Gradrigo. Crash symbol, which is like a open open hat, but longer. It's gonna be two quarter notes long. By the way, the BPM could be, could be set. The default is 120 BPM. I was too slow to to comment out the the crash before the next iteration of the texture came came around and anyway This is how Gradrigo can be used as a very simple live coding platform for chiptune music. I will make more videos about it. Um, some of them will be about the syntax of the of the Gradrigo language. Some of them are going to be about integration with other pieces of software technology uh, like uh, Unity or your audio digital audio workstation so that you can use this thing as a as a uh, chiptune production uh, synthesizer. Okay, let's do a fade out of the melody now. You are very welcome to give Gradrigo a try. Um, just message me through the link that I added to the description, and I will add you to. I will share the link with you how to how to get it. So that's it for today. 
thank you so much for watching and stay tuned.